Hi guys, welcome. Today we'll be building a countdown timer with TK Inter. When time's up, we get notified by an alarm sound played by Pygame module. Let's get started. As always, we first import TK Enter SDK and TTK class from TK Enter, and of course, time module. We are working with time. First, let's create our GUI. I create a window named root and then three string variables hour var, minute var, and second var. These are strings from TK Enter module. Then, let's create file labels to show hours, minutes, and seconds to the user with columns between them. I set the font to Arial and 50 for the size. For our minute and second label, we assign the string variables that we created to their text variables. So if you want to change those labels, you simply change the variable. Then we grid them on the window. Lastly, I show you how the grid system works. Then I create a frame for our buttons, which we pass the root variable, which is our window that we created. Frame groups up a bunch of widgets so we can move those widgets together. Then I grid it. Then we create two buttons from TTK class. TTK class has more modern looking widgets. First arguments of buttons are parent, which we set to the btn frame. And we set the command argument of start button to countdown and edit button to edit. So whenever we click the buttons, those functions get executed. Then we grid them. But we grid them on the btn frame, not the root window, because we set their parent as btn frame. Finally, we call the main loop function to have the window working. Before testing, we should create those functions that we pass to our buttons, countdown function and edit function. As you see, all the labels are all in row number zero, and their column differs as we specified. And our buttons are in the frame that we grid it into the column and row number two. Now we want to open up another window to set the amount of time that we want when we click the edit button. So create a top level named win in the edit function. A top level is a pop-up window, and I set the padding to 10 pixels in each vector. Then we create three labels to show the user what we want from them, and set the parents to our win. If we don't set the parent, they go to our root window by default. Then we grid them, and additionally, we set the iPad X, which widens our labels by 10 pixels internally. Then we create two entries to get the user's input, And finally, we create the submit button, which we set the parent to win, which is our top level, and set command attribute to submit. Our submit function gets four attributes or arguments, h for hour, m for minute, s for second, and w for our top level window. Now we pass the values that user entered in the entries by calling their get method. And fourth argument, we pass the win variable, which is our top level. By doing that, we want to transfer the user input and also close the edit window when user clicks the submit button. And finally, we grid the button, but this time we specify the column span, which means occupy two columns in the row number three. Let's test it. As you see, when I click the edit button, we have a new window, which we can enter our desired hours, minutes, and seconds, and then submit it. Now let's tell the computer what to do when submit button was clicked. So we try to convert the user input to integer, and if we couldn't, we consider the user input as zero, and store the values in our minute and second variables. User can enter some letters in the entries of our edit window, or just leave them empty. So first we try to convert it to an integer. If we couldn't, and we got an error, we go to the accept block and consider the input as zero. Then we create three statements to format the numbers. If hour is between 9 and 25, then we call the hour var and set it to hour using a if string. It means just show it as it is. If it's less than 10, so put a zero before the number. This means instead of 9, to zero, we show 09 to 00, 00 to the user. And if the hour entered by the user is more than 24, then we consider it as 24 because we have only 24 hours. Then we do the same for minute and second. We create three int bars as wanted hour, wanted minute, and wanted second. These are integers that store the formatted user's input, and we set their value. And finally, we call this destroy function, which closes the edit window. Let's first correct the try accept statement and finish the submit function. Now let's create a flag a boolean called counting. And when countdown function gets executed, we set the counting to true. Then we create three variables named hour, minute, and second, 
and assign them the user's input by calling mounted hour, minute, and seconds get functions. Note that these hour, minute, and second variables are not the same as those in submit function. These are local variables and are only available to their owning function, and their name are just similar, they are not the same. Then we convert the hour by multiplying it to 3600 and minute by multiplying to 60, to seconds. And we store the sum of hour, minute, and second as seconds in total in second variable. While total in seconds is greater than minus 1 and counting is true, check if we have any seconds. If we do, then check if it's greater than 9. If it's greater than 9, we set the second var variable to seconds by using a if string. That's because the labels are strings so we need to put the numbers in a string. Then we subtract second by 1, also total in seconds by 1. Then we update our UI by calling the root.update function and then sleep for one second. If second is not greater than nine, do the same, but put a zero before the number. As I said, this is for formatting. Then if you don't have any seconds, check the minute. If it's greater than zero, which means we have minutes, set the minute var to minute, subtract the minute by minus one, and assign the second variable to 59. This should be alif, not if. Then if you don't have any minutes and seconds, then check the hour. If you do have any hours left, then subtract it by 1 and set the hour var to the hour and assign the minutes variable to 60. In the video, I type 59, which is wrong and should be 60. And when we run out of time, we simply print the amount of seconds left. I know that this whole if elif statement is a little bit hard to digest in the first glance. This is what happens. We check if you have any seconds. If you do, then subtract it by 1 and sleep for 1 second, till we have 0 seconds. When we have 0 seconds, we go and check if we have any minutes. If we do, then we subtract the minutes and fill the seconds again, and we immediately go to the seconds and subtract the seconds each second. Next time that we have 0 seconds, then we check the minute, like last time. If we have any minutes left, then we do what we did last time. If not, and we don't have any minutes left, then we go and check to see if we have any hours left, if we do, we subtract the hour by 1 and fill the minutes by 60. In the recording video, I forgot to do that. And if we haven't any seconds, minutes and hours left, we jump out of the loop, which means time's up. Let's test it. We have an error and it's a typo. This should be minute var, not minute. And also, these numbers should be 60 for minutes and seconds. I forgot to do that. Another typo here and also this submit function is a problem because we can't pass a function as an argument with parentheses. To do that, we need to use lambda. Simply type lambda column before the function's name and we should be good to go. Yep, it works and at the end, total in seconds is minus 1. And look that formatting is working well. But we are not finished yet. A timer isn't a timer without an alarm sound. So let's import Pygame and Mixer from Pygame. Pygame is a module to create games and we only use its sound system which is incredibly good. And I forgot to put the global keyboard before counting. That means that we can modify the counting flag or boolean inside our function. And also, in the submit function, we set the flag to false. So if the time is not up and we want to change the time again, we stop the timer and set the fresh values to count down. When time's up, we load our sound, which I've already downloaded from Pixabay. And it's in the same folder where script is, so I don't need to specify the path. Mixer.music.loadAlarm.mp3 And then we call the Mixer.music.play to play the sound. Let's test it. Works perfectly, but we are not done yet. We stop the music when we press start and edit buttons. Let's test what we've created.
Timer is good, alarm gets played perfectly, and when I press the edit button, sound gets muted. Nice. The formatting works nicely, and we can change the values whenever we want. That's it guys, it wasn't too easy, but you've done it. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more. Take care, see you later.